Um, today's uh, first speaker is going to be dialing in from Eritrea, which most of you don't need any introduction of. We're excited to have him. Mr. Stephen C. Walker will be interviewed with uh, Leila Khalid. She is the uh, Assistant Executive Director and a journalist of ERISAT, uh, joined by uh, Takle, Henok Takle, which is the ERISAT um, Executive Director, and as well as a journalist as well. So there will be a Tigrinya version of it, though we're going to do a most of it in English. For those of you who are uh, really uh, watching this, we're really excited to, to have you here today. So just to give you a quick uh, um, bio on introduction for our keynote speaker, Stephen C. Walker, Chief of Mission U.S. Embassy Asmara. Uh, he is a career member of the Department of State Senior Foreign Service Class of Minister Counselor. He has been charged the affair at the U.S. Embassy in Asmara. Eritrea since December 2019. Prior to his assignment, Mr. Walker was a Deputy Assistant Secretary in the Bureau of Human Resources and his overseas assignment focused on Africa and Middle East. He has served as a Council in General in Basar, Iraq, as a Deputy Chief Mission for Libya External Office in Malta and in posting to Iraq, Syria, Yemen, Mauritania, and Turkey. In Washington, D.C., Mr. Walker has served as the Director of the Office of East Africa and Affairs and the Deputy Director of the Office of Arabian Peninsula Affair. He was also a RESC Fellow of Georgetown University. Mr. Walker was born and raised in Hawaii. He has a bachelor's degree from Reed College, a master's degree in International Relations of Fletcher School of Law, and a diplomacy and a distinguished graduate um, of the National War College, where he earned a master's degree in national security strategy. Prior to joining the Foreign Service, Mr. Walker was a Peace Corps volunteer in Morocco and a presidential management fellow at the US Information Agency. He is married with two children and currently residing in Asmara, Eritrea. Welcome, Mr. Walker, and we look forward to hearing from you. With that, I will pass the mic to Saba, who will do the introduction in Tigrinya. I am the Embassy of Eritrea, of Samara, and Stephen Walker. I am the Embassy of Samara, and I am the Embassy of Samara. I am the Embassy of Samara, and I am the Embassy of Samara. I am the online. ያቀንኔና and I would like to uh, thank uh, Ambassador Stephen Walker for joining us live from our beautiful city, Asmara. Welcome. Hello from Asmara. Can they welcome the handle? Hi, I'm Steve Walker, the Chargé d'Affaires at the U.S. Embassy in Asmara. Thank you so much for inviting me to participate in this gathering. It's an honor for me to be with you today. And it's my pleasure to share with you my thoughts about the critical role of a free press to the democratization process. Before I begin, though, I want to make it clear that participation in these kinds of events is very normal for American diplomats. American diplomats, as part of their jobs, try to meet with a wide variety of, of people and groups in the countries to which they're assigned. This includes media outlets, political parties, business leaders, and private citizens. There's been some criticism on social media about my participation in this event. Some people are claiming that my joining you today is an endorsement of the Eritrean opposition and an indication that the US government is pursuing a policy of regime change in Eritrea. Neither of those things are true. Erisat, is an Eritrean media platform. It broadcasts news and information to Eritreans around the world. Now, it may have particular viewpoints and opinions on issues of concerns to Eritreans, 
and it has the right to have and express whatever viewpoints and opinions it wants. My participation in this event does not mean I agree with Arasat's viewpoints and opinions, and it certainly doesn't mean that the United States is endorsing the Airtrain opposition. Airtrain issues are for Airtrains to decide. I was delighted to receive the invitation to speak with you today, but let me note just for the record that I have also sought to engage the state-run media in Asmara. Air TV did a report, for example, on one of our American Center programs, but unfortunately, uh, it was not allowed to broadcast it. And a few months ago, I sent a letter to the Eritrea profile to correct uh, inaccurate information on U.S. policy that was printed in one of its editorials, but my letter was never printed. And about a year ago, I met with Information Minister Yamane to ask that the state-run media cover American Center activities and print opinion pieces written by me since they cover the activities of other embassies and allow ambassadors from other countries to speak to the Eritrean people through the state-run media. My request wasn't granted. I would be happy to sit for an interview with, with Eritv or Eritrea Profile to ensure that the Eritrean public has an accurate understanding of US policy towards Eritrea. The subject of today's symposium is the importance of a free press in the democratization process. As I'm sure you all know, and certainly those of you who follow Embassy Asmara's Facebook page know, the United States' views of free press is critically important to countries' de democratic and economic success. The United States vigorously promotes the right to freedom of expression, including for members of the press, at home and all around the world. And in this regard, I would note that commentators on our Facebook posts sometimes criticize me for my advocacy of human rights. They ask me, uh, are you an activist or an ambassador? Uh, that puzzles me because I would hope that I'm both. I would note too that our Facebook page tries to model our values of freedom of expression. We don't censor comments. People are free to post their thoughts and opinions even if they disagree with US policy. Now, we delete, race, we delete racist comments and foul language, but we allow a free discussion of ideas. That is so important. The free flow of information, ideas, and opinions is essential for domestic stability, good policymaking, government accountability, and economic prosperity. A vibrant, independent press is a cornerstone for any healthy, democratic, and free country. At the core of freedom of expression is the idea that information is a public good. Good decision-making requires information. We trust that the truth will emerge from a free exchange of ideas and information. A free press is key to that. A free press is also one of the most effective tools we have for advancing respect for human rights and economic well-being. A free press can document unjust working conditions, corrupt or failing public services, discrimination against women in marginalized groups, and abuse by security forces. It can also reveal failing businesses, unfair market practices, and corrupt officials. Accurate press reporting highlights problems that need fixing and often provides suggestions on how to fix those problems. This is often necessary for change and growth. Today, the exercise of freedom of expression, including by members of the press, faces profound threats, making it more important and urgent than ever before to protect and nurture a free press. Around the world, governments threaten, harass, imprison, and attack journalists just for doing their jobs every week. 293 journalists were behind bars at the end of 2021. And of those, 16 are held in Eritrea. There is, unfortunately, no free press in Eritrea. All the media here is directly controlled by the government. The lack of independent, unbiased information resulting from the lack of press freedom here has devastating effects on the ability of Eritreans to make well-informed decisions about the important uh, issues in their lives. And because there is no free press or freedom of expression, Eritrean citizens are unable to speak up about issues that concern them or express disagreement with the government, or hold officials accountable in the court of public opinion. 
No credible international businesses will invest in Eritrea because of the unavailability of information about the economy or policy environment. And this makes it impossible for them to make fully informed decisions. Citizens, as I'm sure you all know, must rely on rumor and word of mouth to learn about policy changes, leading to uncertainty about what rules and regulations they need to follow. This is inefficient and confusing. It also places undue burden on the Eritrean people. Eritreans, like people everywhere, should be allowed to exercise their right to express themselves, to hold their government officials accountable for their policies and decisions, and to make well-informed decisions. The Eritrean people are a vibrant, intelligent, and engaged people. To achieve their full potential, they must be allowed to speak as they wish, to create as they wish, and to write as they wish. A government confident in its legitimacy does not fear the expression of dissent by its citizens. Good, effective governments welcome the expression of differing points of view. May 3rd was World Press Freedom Day. To commemorate this day, our Facebook page named some of the journalists being held in detention in Eritrea. I'm gonna take a minute now to say their names to show the world that we have not forgotten them. Dawi Isak, Sayum Tsahaye, Dawi Habte Mikael. We know these brave Eritreans are being held in awful conditions. Some have health issues. We pray for them to have strength. Mateus Habdu, Fisaye Joshua Johannes, Emmanuel Asrat. I'm naming individual people. But let's remember that each of these individuals has a family. We remember those family members and, and their beloved ones in our thoughts and prayers as well. Tamezgen Gebreyesus, Saeed Abdelkader, Yusuf Muhammad Ali, Madhani Haile. You know, I note as a father myself that some of these men are fathers as well, and they've not seen their kids grow up, get married, and have children of their own. Gebrehiwat Keleta, Salam Yangis Bayane, Hamid Mohammed Saeed, Salah El Jaziri. We think of these brave Eritreans and know that they're heroes. History will remember them as those who sacrificed for their country. We remember these men. We say their names out loud and we pray for them and we hold them dear in our hearts. Eritrean artists and intellectuals, like Eritrean journalists, should be able to express themselves freely. Dissent should not be labeled treason. In this regard, I also want to remember the G15, who have been in prison for over 20 years now, simply for expressing public criticism of the PFDJ and government policy. The US Embassy in Asmara and the government of the United States more broadly urges the Eritrean government to release these individuals and all other prisoners of conscience, all others who have been imprisoned for the crime of peacefully expressing their opinions. They've been imprisoned far too long. We further urge the Eritrean government to implement the constitution that was drafted and promulgated in 1997. And finally, we urge the Eritrean government to abide by its international human rights commitments and respect the human rights and fundamental freedoms of individuals living in the state of Eritrea, including the right to freedom of expression. Now, in urging the Eritrean government in this way, we're not dictating or politicizing human rights. We're urging the Eritrean government to improve on human rights because we want Eritrea to be stable and prosperous. We want Eritrea to succeed. Now, the United States is not perfect when it comes to human rights. No country is. We are all still works in progress. The important thing is to be committed to creating a more just and free country and a more just and free world. I'd like to thank Arasat for this opportunity to speak with you and for being a source of news, information, and alternative viewpoints to Eritrea's inside Eritrea and around the world. Now, again, my being here with you today does not mean that I or the United States endorse Arasat or share its views. What it does mean is that we share the belief that freedom of expression 
including its expression in terms of a free press, is critical to a country's democratic and economic development. I'd also like to repeat what I said earlier. If any officials from the Ministry of Information are watching, and you know they are, uh, I would be happy to appear on ERA TV or be interviewed by the state-run media. It's my job to engage with Eritreans of all political beliefs and to explain U.S. policy and values to any media outlet that's interested. And now I'd be happy to answer any questions you might have. <laughs>